So right now I'm starting in the, uh, let me go with YouTube widgets, live chat viewer. We'll put this over here. See how this works. Let's make this window smaller. There we go. I think that works. Okay, so right now it looks like I don't see anyone on YouTube. I mean, let's go make this happen on Facebook. So uh, let's go, we'll go broadcast Facebook. And we'll do how to draw the human hand. Okay, and start the broadcast. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look and see if I'm live here on Facebook. You never know. So right now everything looks pretty good. I don't see anyone on YouTube, but I'm going to go ahead and check real quick to see if up oh, there I am. Okay, and so right now I'm going to go, and so I see we are on Facebook, which is pretty cool. So let me go rush over to Facebook, because I don't see anyone on YouTube. Let's see, hit Timothy. Okay, so we have Heidi, which is great. It's good to see you, Heidi. I hope you're feeling better. And let's see, so I'm just going to make this big so I can see everybody. Also, I, I'm gonna change this from just friends to public so everybody can see it, so I can see everybody. Okay, so this is where we are. And so today we are doing the human hand. And this is pretty exciting because the human hand uh, basically is uh, just the most amazing piece of machinery or what have you out there. I have some pretty cool little uh, tidbits of information about the human hand. There are around 29 major and minor bones in the human hand. And also this number is not universal. Some of us actually have more or less bones than others in the hand. So that's really weird, right? That's like some of us have common sense and some of us don't. <laughs> and it says here the hands have 29 major joints, at least 123 ligaments, 34 muscles, 48 nerves, and 30 arteries. I thought that was really wild. Uh, nine individual muscles control the thumb. Three major hand nerves control the thumb muscles. So that's pretty cool. The fingers themselves have no muscles. Instead, the muscles that bend the fingers are located in the palm and mid forearm that are linked to the fingers through tendon. So that's really weird. There's no muscles in your, in your fingers. So that's pretty darn crazy. Uh, one quarter of the brain's motor cortex, which is the area that controls all movement, is dedicated to moving just the hand muscles alone. Hey John, how you doing? Uh, one quarter, uh, let's say only primates have hands. The 300 primate species, including humans, apes, monkeys, and prosimians, lemurs, lorises, and tarsiers. So that's pretty cool. Also, the human hands are able to make grips that other primates, such as chimps and gorillas, cannot. This is because we have, a sh we have shorter hands and longer, more powerful thumbs than our primate relatives. So, interesting. It says here, through the hands, touch can increase the release of oxytocin, this uh, feel-good hormone, and it's released during that and also bonding activities. Holding hands has shown to decrease levels of cortisol the stress hormone. Human hands are complex tools adapted over millions of years of evolution. 
successful massage therapists and students on their way to receiving massage licenses understand the power of touch and the healing qualities therein. So I thought that was pretty interesting. And so that's something that I think we all need to look in. Oh, hey, Wendy, how's it going? So we are here on YouTube and on Facebook at the same time. Cheryl, good to see you. There's Bill. So thank you for stopping by. And so let's go ahead and jump into Krita. And I am going to basically start this. So you guys are ready. Let me know. And let's go ahead and make this happen. Okay. Now, the thing about the human hands and to draw and paint the human hands, the thing is, is that uh, it's so important to uh, construct the hand, right? That's what you want to do. You don't want to just try and draw the hand. It's far too complex. So you, you have to know the general construction of the human hand, and that's when it'll be much easier. So basically, here are your knuckles, and your knuckles pretty much goes in a, in a rounded form like that. And you'll see that. So you want to find the knuckles and also you want to find the wrist over here. And you want to go from the index finger straight down. Don't worry about the thumb going this way. That's a separate form. So you don't want to get confused with that. You know what I mean? So, uh, so that's something that when you construct the hand, you want to go straight down and follow the wrist and where the wrist attaches to uh, the arm there. So you see that? And it's sort of like a uh, quadrilateral or, or a trapezoid, I should say. So this is the shape that you need to find, which is going along the rounded form of the knuckles and down here where the hand inserts to the wrist. So, so that's really, really important. So if you're looking at it in space, this is going to be what the hand basically is, this shape. It's going to basically look like this. But this is actually going to be rounded. You see that? That's going to be rounded. So this is actually the shape that you're looking for when you're working on the hand. And also, uh, you're not worried about the thumb. That's a separate shape, and we're going to go into that. And then you have the each finger over here like that. And so that is how it's. That's how we're basically going to construct the hand. Now you can construct this shape with anything. You know, you can construct it. Uh, in all different angles. So let's say if the hand is at this angle over here Let's say the hands going down, right? So what you would do is you would find the shape of the knuckles like we did and So this would be where the, the knuckles are and this is where the wrist is So you always want to find that shape, right? This is the wrist and this is the knuckles. So you always, always, always want to find that shape when you're constructing. Now, I'm not giving you carte blanche not to pay attention to the hand or not to pay attention to the one second rule. I'm not saying that at all. What I am saying is, is that it's a lot easier if you're constructing that hand as opposed to just, you know, wigging, wigging it because trust me, this hand is far too complex to just draw it, you know, right on. You know, you have to definitely watch out for that. Okay, so let's go ahead and... All right, so basically you have all the different fingers. We're not talking about the thumb. You have the fingers. But there's a point where all the tendons radiate, and it's right here. That's where all the tendons radiate. And that's important to realize 
because so you have a knuckle here you have a knuckle here knuckle here knuckle here so what you need to do is draw straight lines to that point and you'll see that's exactly where the tendons are and you'll also understand when you see those tendons on the hand it'll make so much sense so it's not like you are just you know oh okay what is that line no that's not what I want you to do I want you to really look for those tendons remember there are no muscles in the fingers the muscles are in the hands are actually uh, the muscles for the fingers are actually in the hand and the forearm there's tendons like a pulley system that moves them that moves those fingers okay so let's go ahead and we're going to find that shape we're going to go do it here right so i want you to do that on your paper so you see where the knuckles are and make sure you do the one second rule because i want those that angle to be correct right so go like this and you want to get that trapezoid it's a it's a rectangle but you know all the sides are kind of uh, not parallel so it's kind of weird crazy <laughs> weird crazy rectangle okay and at this point you want to go ahead and do your insertion here and and right here is where you're gonna do the tendons of each finger just like that so that's where I want you to be okay Hey Heidi, good to see you. How you feeling? So that's cool. And so we have uh, we have Annie and Robert and Janine and uh, Luke and uh, so many people here. I really appreciate everybody hanging out with me today. Uh, so that's really cool. So so that's what you want to do. You want to get to that point. And as you see here, you know, since we have this, you know, we can come down with the wrist that we see okay so this is where I want you to be eventually of course you're going to get rid of these uh, these lines here but this is a guide this is how you're going to construct that hand and there are also some really uh, fascinating uh, mathematical equations in the fingers I think you're going to find really interesting so that's really cool so right here is the insertion point so what I want you to do is to draw this triangle right here. You see how what we're doing, just like when we, we did the ear, just like when we did, uh, you know, the eye and everything. A lot of this stuff is, you know, geometric in its, in its nature. So I want you to draw that triangle, but I also want you to really pay attention to what's going on on the reference as well. So you see, we're just going to go like this. So that's, we have that going right there, which is pretty cool. And, you know, we're not trying to draw like the perfect hand here. I'm just basically showing you uh, all how to construct the hand as opposed to like, oh my God, how am I going to do this? Now. What's really interesting about the fingers, I don't know if any of you ever heard of the Fibonacci numbers or the golden ratio. Now what that is, the golden ratio is a ratio from two to three, and that's the Fibonacci numbers. And also it's the golden ratio. And what this is, is that if you were to divide the uh, three into two, the two into three, it will never be solved. That number will go on forever. And it's also called the golden ratio, okay? And you'll see this in nature. They say it's like God's number, right? The golden ratio. So it's rather interesting because in the finger, from this finger, to this finger would be three. This finger to this would be two. However, from this finger would be three. I mean, from this joint here to here would be two. So this joint to this joint is three to two. This joint to this joint is three to two. And that's the same with all of the fingers. 
And that is really amazing, so very cool. Oh, cool, so Wendy says, uh, point of fingers tell how much testosterone was released in the womb. Very interesting, yeah, there's so many really great uh, topics uh, with the hands, uh, really, they're really just amazing, just like all of nature, right? Now you see here, we have this length all the way along here. So I pretty much figured out that half of this length is the length of the first joint of the index finger. So right about here would be, and once you do this, once you have the index finger down, then all the other fingers pretty much kind of fall into place. So what you're gonna do is you're just going to uh, do that like that, you see that? So the first joint is gonna be the half of the distance of this trapezoid here. So that's pretty cool. Remember, we're gonna do three, and then we're going to go here as far as ratio two and then of course this is going to be three to two now also fingers if you see they always taper uh, from fatter to thinner as you go towards the fingernail so that's that's always okay always look for that that's another thing that always look for Another thing, you want to try not to make your fingers too thin. That's something a lot of us do, especially in the early going. So make sure you put some meat on those bones, okay? <laughs> That's always a, a good rule of thumb. Oh, that was a really funny pun, wasn't it? I did not mean that. You know, a good rule of thumb when we're painting the hands. Sometimes I'm really funny when I'm not paying attention. It's when I'm trying to be funny, that's when nobody laughs. All right, so let's see what's going on. And anyone is out there in uh, YouTube. I don't see anyone out there in YouTube today. Uh, maybe the chat thing is off on YouTube. I don't know. Let's see. Oh, okay. So there we have some YouTube people here. Okay, I can't see you guys on YouTube. So I had to go to a different screen. So we have Tone and uh, Wendy, uh, John and brad and uh you guys are over there on youtube i have to come back and forth <laughs> brad says he's used to my weird sense of humor. <laughs> poor guy right that you have to deal with that you know so we're going to go back make sure that i am on the screen here let's see and let me look, make sure that you guys can see me. Yes, okay, good. So we're in good shape. Let's go back. Just be one quick moment. I'm gonna go back to Krita. Okay, so once we do that, we also want to check out, now the middle finger is always going to be the most expressive finger. Yes, very true. It's always gonna be the most <laughs> expressive finger, but also, it always is the longest finger. So at least in my travels, the middle finger is always the longest finger. So you're just gonna look and see uh, what the relationship is. You know, you still wanna do your angle measurements. You know, you see this, that sort of thing. And we're just, and also I want you to see the negative shapes here. You know, that's important. These negative shapes beside, behind, be, you know, negative shapes that are in between the fingers. That's really gonna help you to, to, to get this right. And remember, these are like little cylinders, right? And little cylinders that, that radiate uh, out of this spot here and you wanna get the angles of those cylinders. Now here's an interesting thing about hands, and when you do hands, you guys are gonna see that, it's gonna be pretty interesting. Um, when you are looking at hands from the back, not from the front, but on the back, 
if you look at your hands, you can actually see webbing. So we all have webbing. Isn't that interesting? But you can only see it from the back of the hand. If you look uh, at your palm, you don't have that angle of the webbing. But you do see the angle of the webbing from the back of the hand. So look at that. That's pretty weird. So, you know, really studying the hands, we find out things we don't want to find out, I think. So let's continue. And we also want to look at the, re the, the relationships of the joints. So you have this joint right here and here, and you can see that it probably is a little bit higher than nine o'clock, maybe closer to nine o'clock than 10 o'clock. If you're looking uh, at the angles of, let's say a watch or a clock on the wall. Okay, so let's go ahead and, but you know, this is actually very easy to do now because now since we know the two to th the three to two ratio, right? Or the two to three ratio, which is three to two. So we know that this is gonna be a two ratio. And so that actually corresponds to, you know, what we need to, to see. So there's a lot of things that could really help us with uh, measurement with the hand if you know if you know the proportions right if you know uh, what to look for like anything else if you have a map you're going to get there a lot faster than if you're just you know blindly looking as if it's the first time you ever seen it so that's yes <laughs> park frog very true you know it's like our you know our amphibian like uh past always comes back to haunt us so definitely feel that so as you can see with the two to three ratio it really helps us to construct this hand and it really isn't difficult to draw the hand once you know all of these different aspects right once you have these different aspects it becomes much easier now same thing here now this is interesting so the joint here is usually about the same size as the joint of the ring finger. So if you just follow this here, you'll see that we pretty much could find the first joint of the ring finger, which is really wild. And I also always watch the negative space, right? You know, this, this is what I'm talking about, negative space, see that? If we watch that, then we know we're not going to be off base. So those are other things to really watch and concentrate when you're working on the hands. Now, this is not just, you know, we're just doing this project so everyone could have a wonderful drawing of a hand. This project or this lesson is to help you to see hands differently and you can practice hands. And I don't advocate doing hands out of your head. Uh, what I advocate is tracing hands, you know, uh, you know, drawing hands from reference. If you ever do have to draw out of your head from doing it from reference, it's going to be a lot easier. So that's what I would really like to see. So draw uh, from reference whenever you can. Trace, that's always important. Tracing the uh, hands are, are really crucial. So as you can see, the hands actually extend past uh, because of the webbing that we see. So they actually pass. So I'm just gonna erase and clean up some of this area right here. Let me blow this up. So that's what I want you to do. Clean up some of these. Uh, now remember, when you're sketching, the lines are like training wheels when you're learning how to ride a bike. You don't want to take the training wheels off too early and you don't want to get rid of your guidelines too early because then you're going to be lost, right? So with that's the thinking that I want you to have. So you see, we're just going to work on our guidelines here and she has a little bit of a big knuckle right there, okay? All right, so we have that first knuckle right there, which is really good. And now, remember, three to two, right? Fibonacci numbers, golden ratio. You find a golden ratio everywhere. If you ever get a book, I definitely recommend uh, 
a book by a mathematician. What is his name? Uh, usually a... The, oh, here it is. Mario Livio. L-I-V-I-O. Amazing book on the golden ratio. Really wonderful. So highly recommend it. Okay, so now let's do the... And let's look at the relationship from this knuckle here, down here. So we can actually do that and then do our two to three. Because this extends further. There we go. And it's just wonderful how we can construct this hand. And it looks pretty complex is because we have an understanding of not necessarily a concise understanding. It's good if you do have an understanding anatomically, but to have that construction under, constructive understanding is really going to make a huge difference. Okay. And then we're going to look at the angle here. See that? And that's going to tell us where this, this finger falls. Here's a very interesting uh, little information. So if you look at your pinky, take your hand, put it in front of you, you know, with the uh, back of the hand facing you. Look at your pinky next to your ring finger. The pinky is always as long as the next to last digit of your ring finger. You see that? It's a whole digit shorter. And that's pretty interesting. That's on everybody. Unless, of course, you're a mutant, and that's different. <laughs> and I love mutants, so don't worry about it. This is a mutant-friendly area. And so we're just going to do our two to three. So, this, so we know very well that this is where the uh, pinky will uh, be left off. There we go. So you see we have that construction of the hand pretty nicely though. I really feel that that's a nice construction of the hand, which is really very, very cool. I'm just gonna quickly check and see how uh, my peeps are doing. Hey, Gloria, I see Gloria over there in, uh, in YouTube world and we have uh, Rick. So that's pretty cool. So it's good to see you. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's so cool. So I'm so glad you're here. It's just some really good information on the hand and how important it is. But we shouldn't be afraid of the hand. And I guess that's unless someone's going to hit you. But uh, besides that, we shouldn't be afraid of the hand, right? Because it's... Uh, it is, uh, once we know how to construct it, we sort of get rid of the stigma that goes with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can erase the lines here on the thumb. No, I can't. Oh, no. Okay. So I can't erase that. But we're going to construct the thumb. So let's go ahead and make that happen. Now, so we have the thumb here. And so right here is our joint on the thumb Then we're going to do. And the same thing. So it's a two to three ratio. And so we want to get that sweep of the thumb. Also, we want to look at the index finger here. And we want to see what angle, right? So I would say the angle from the index finger to the tip of the thumb would be about four o'clock, right? So we're going to go four o'clock, just like that. So this way we don't make that the hugest, most crazy looking thumb ever. So that's really going to help us not to do something a little crazy. So look at that. So that looks pretty good. Also, you want to make sure that you have this negative shape correct. See that? That's really going to help us. So Negative shapes are really, when you're constructing the hand, are really going to help a lot as to, you know, having a hand that looks really good. 
So now what you can do, we have everything constructed. That's basically the whole hand. And now we can go ahead and, you know, refine it, which is really, really fantastic. And taking something as complex is so important. Cheryl says that she, uh, she don't understand the two to three. Uh, that's a ratio of, uh, you know, let's say, just for instance, uh, something is three inches and then something else is two inches, inches being the unit of measurement. So that means the ratio is three to two, right? And that's what's happening in the knuckles here or in the joints, that it is a three to two, three to two ratio. And that's on everyone's fingers and that's part of the Fibonacci uh, sequence or golden ratio that you see in nature over and over again. So always look for that, the three to two ratio. We're going from, you know, from large to small, but if you go from small to large, that's two to three ratio. And it's whatever unit of measurement, it could be millimeters, it could be, but you're always going to see that three to two ratio when you're constructing the hands, especially in the fingers. Okay, so I hope that helps. But uh, definitely uh, go on the internet and look up the golden ratio. You're really going to be amazed uh, at what you will find when you look on the internet with that. It really is just amazing. Oh, cool. So great, Cheryl. So Phil, how's it going? Phil, all the way from, from England. And so look how, you know, we can go ahead and we can just start erasing a little bit and then we could really, you know, refine that hand. But remember what I said, you know, that your, your lines when you're sketching are your training wheels. So make sure you don't get rid of where those joints are, okay? Because you're going to need them where to, where to go ahead and put the joints. And we're just going to clean this up a little bit. So why is this important? You know, you know, I'm, someone might say, I'm a photorealist. I don't really need this. Well, we really do because we say things much more profoundly the more we know about something. So you can say something so much more profound if you're drawing a close friend or doing a portrait of a close friend and a complete stranger. And I think the same thing, if you know the nature of certain uh, parts of the human anatomy and you know what to look for, I really think that you can say something a lot more uh, profound. So I really feel that your hands will, when you work on your portraits or your figure drawings, your hands are not going to be like, oh my God, how do I get through this? You're really going to attack those hands and be like, all right. I see what's going on here and you construct it and you can construct the hands and you know really get your hands more expressive too you know and that's what you want the hands can be a definite ex form of expression when when uh, painting and drawing your portrait and you know you never want to shy away from anything and I did that too the reason why I really went into the hands so deeply was because I know what my favorite portraits of the old masters, how crucial and how that hand really makes such a huge difference. So that's one of the reasons why it's always good to concentrate on the hands and let that be part of your study. You know, you study the, the face, you know, the lips. I see a lot of people work on lips and eyes, especially the watery eyes and everything like that. But if you could really study uh, the nature of hands. I think that will definitely bring your work to that next level, you know, so that's what you definitely want to uh, You want to definitely go that route, okay, so I hope that helps so let's continue here I'm gonna go back to Krita Okay, so now that we did that you can definitely see so it's gonna be a short lesson, but the lesson today is the construction of the hands 
And so that's, that's what I want the takeaway to be, just to construct those hands, look for that, um, you know, look for that, uh, that trapezoid, so to speak, and then the radius point in the center of the wrist, and that's where the tendons are. Let me see if we can do one more hand just to construct this, and let's see if we can work that out together. So I'm just gonna put this here, there we go. So let me go ahead and bring in another hand, and then we'll quickly work on that. So import, export, export as paint layer, and what would be a good hand? Uh, one of my students and I worked on this hand yesterday, and it was pretty good. And uh, this one, I like this hand right here. Okay, a little more complex. See, there we go. And let's make this hand smaller, because it's really huge. We're gonna work on the bottom hand, okay? And let's make that happen. We're just going to construct this hand. All right, so going to the hand. Now we're doing the same exact thing is that we want to construct the hand. And the first thing that we have to construct is that trapezoid, right? And what's a trapezoid? A trapezoid is basically a rectangle that all the sides are pretty much not parallel to one another. Sometimes they will be, but most of the times they won't be. So let's go ahead and we're just gonna draw that. See that? Right up to where the knuckles are and right where the wrist, the insertion of the wrist, right here. So that's what we're looking for. Remember, we're not paying attention to the to the thumb, that's a whole different ball game. Is that triangle, if you see it at a certain angle. So we're just gonna do that. So let's go ahead and make that happen. So we're going to do that shape. And of course, you see that this is rounded, right? And it's gonna be a little bit rounded and maybe I can make it a little bit bigger. So that's your main shape. So that's always gonna be your main shape. And what you wanna do when you look at that main shape, you wanna think about it in your mind. Okay, this is what that shape's gonna be. It's gonna look like this, and it's gonna have insertion points, and the fingers are all gonna be cylinders, right? And, and when you think of them as cylinders, it's gonna be a lot more easier for you to do the light and shade. So think about that as cylinders, just as a crude uh, reference, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our center uh, insertion point right here, right? That's so important. Now you'll see that the tendons radiate from there. Remember, you know, what we were talking about earlier, that the hands, your fingers, don't have muscles. It's all like a pulley system, right? And that's pretty wild when you think about that, like it's a pulley system. All the hand, all the muscles in the hand are, you know, on the heel of the hand, the thumb, and also the uh, forearm. And no muscles in the fingers. So that's pretty wild stuff, if you ask me. All right, so remember, we're always gonna, we're gonna go ahead and do that. And I want you to also, when you're doing this and you're constructing, don't just do this out of your head. I want you to really watch and see how those tendons, you'll have superficial uh, you know, landmarks and detail in that hand that will reveal just part of those tendons. I want you to look for them. And, but if you're looking for them, and you know they're gonna be there, it's so much more exciting than just drawing it out of your head. Okay, so remember that this shape right here, pretty much half of this shape is going to be, uh, you know, the, the size of this first, your index finger to the first, first digit, right? Right here to the first joint. 
just like that. So that's pretty cool. Now we also have to worry about the two to three ratio because we know about the two to three or three to two, depending on what direction you're going. If you're going from the tip of the finger to the uh, knuckle here, it's going to be it's going to be two to three, three to two, going from the knuckle to the tip of the finger. Let's erase that. Okay, so we don't need that anymore. So once we have that first unit of measurement, everything else should just fall into place because we know the ratios already. That makes life so much easier. So two to three. Also with this finger, we can see that those uh, fingers are going, in, you know, they're, they're foreshortened. They're going away into space. So sort of in perspective, but we still know that we're not going to make it the same size and it is that 3 to 2 ratio there we go okay now we also want to look when we're doing hands we also want to make sure that we are paying attention to the negative shapes you know what is the are there any negative shapes in this hand and there really isn't what we do know about this hand is that the middle finger, uh, the knuckle, is, uh, is longer than the index finger. And that's on everybody. Like I said, you know, there are exceptions to every rule. But 99.99%, .99%, that's going to be the case. So always look into that. Oh, hey. Uh Oh, so Phil, uh, mom's doing okay. Thank you so much for asking. Uh, she was admitted and they're giving her antibiotics. So I really appreciate that. So that's really cool. Thank you so much, Phil. And what I'm going to do here is I want to see the ins this angle right here. Where does this, this sort of finger just sort of disappear in space? And I'm just going to... Uh, follow that so I know by the knuckle that this knuckle is longer and also this joint is longer and also where it falls in pretty much right where this uh, final joint is so that's how we would want to construct this and let's do the other finger now this is a little more interesting because the fingers are not just straight up they're sort of going back into space one of the ways you can really look is this negative space right here. And you want to pay attention to the negative space. See that? That's important. That's going to help you and make a big difference when you're working on your hand. And let's go ahead and we'll, we'll construct that. And let me get my eraser, because I think I went overboard here a little bit. Let's see. There we go. Okay. That makes sense. So you want to make sure we don't lose sight, and that's what happened to me. We'll just reconstruct this here. And let's make this smaller. Oh, thank you so much, Cheryl. I appreciate that. Yes. It's not like uh, COVID-19 or anything, thank God. But, you know, it's still, your prayers are so, so welcome. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to do this hand here. Now, remember that the, uh, usually the ring finger and the index finger are pretty much the same size. So these knuckles are pretty much going to line up, this finger and that finger. And then we see, hard, after this knuckle, we see hardly any of it. And it just sort of goes back into space like that. Same thing, you know, we want to construct this hand. And we have the pinky. 
And the pinky, of course, is the smallest of the fingers. You didn't need me to, to tell you that, of course. So there we go. And then, so you see how we, just by following what we did with the other hand, we can construct that, that hand really fast. And that's so much more important to get that gesture of the hand. You wouldn't be able to get that gesture if you didn't understand the hand as well. Now, we want to look for that angle of where that thumb joint is, okay? So, we're going to look right there. It's pretty much going to be where the dumb thumb joint. And then we're going to look, always look and see what the angles are of the tip of the thumb to the tip of, you know, another landmark. So, I look for that triangle shape. And let's make this happen. So we're going to come up at this angle here. And that's going to tell me where that thumb ends. Just like that. So I really hope that this really helps you guys and girls to understand how to construct those hands, you know, and how that is so important. Uh, even if you're projecting your hands or tracing your hands, you still have to paint them and you still have to have that understanding. So now once we have this done, we could work on the wrist, right? And where the arm comes in. And that's really very cool. And we can start to clean it up just like this with your eraser. And you can get a little more, you know, a little better in your contours. Just like that. And we can just clean that up. And it's so cool when you, when we do this, and if you do this long enough, and I want you to do a lot of different ones. I mean, I want you to do a lot of different ones. I just Google hands, or women's hands, men, men hands, mostly women's hands, and I'll just go ahead and just cut and paste them and, you know, copy them into my computer and then do something like this or print them out and just continue, continue uh, working, you know. Continue constructing, constructing those hands. Remember, this stuff, if you do it and you do it often, will pay off. That's for sure. You know, uh, definitely will pay off. So you definitely want to do that. Sorry about you guys out on YouTube. I can't see the both screens. I'm basically looking from the Facebook side. So I do apologize. Thank you guys for hanging out with me so far. Really appreciate it. Okay, so we're just going to continue... Uh, to clean up these hands here. And remember also other things that happen that the hands taper from fatter to thinner and they get a little fatter at each joint here as you can see usually there's a bulge and uh, so but they always taper to the tips of the finger there and it's pretty cool there are you know these laws of nature uh, that once we do find them makes our life a lot easier as artists as you can see it's not a bad hand and it was done rather quickly.
So the program I'm using is Krita. It's a free program. It's very similar to uh, something like Photoshop or Metabang or Clip Studio. And I use it as a teaching medium and also to do desktop publishing. And also I'm gonna start teaching that as well. So thank you, Wendy. I appreciate that so much. Thank you so much. And so we're just gonna continue cleaning up that hand. And remember, you don't wanna get rid of those uh, training wheels, you know, um, what I mean is those uh, guidelines, like the joints and everything before you're ready, because you might need them. So when you're rendering out and doing shadows and shade and stuff like that. So let's see here. And as you can see, once you once you construct it, you can definitely go back in and start your shading process. And now maybe you can go ahead when you're at this point, you can get rid of some of those, uh, you know, some of those lines that you were working on. And you can keep these lines here. You might be able to use them later. So that's it. So basically I want you to go ahead and do them on your own, practice them, practice from the construction, just as a very quick uh, review. So with the hands, you want to start off with that trapezoid, right? How important that trapezoid is. So remember the trapezoid like that. This is the insertion point at this part where it attaches to the arm. And then you are going to radiate each of the fingers out from there at that insertion point. And then remember from this right here, one half of this is basically going to be your first, first uh, segment of the index finger. And you're always going to do from the knuckle to the tip of the finger, three to two. And also this is going to become three to two. And that's how you're going to basically just follow that. And as you see, you can construct the hand just that easy. This is going to be equal to that pretty much. And of course, remember with the pinky, its size is actually one whole digit smaller than the ring finger. So look at that, and then you have the triangle of the thumb. And of course the thumb comes out like that. So it's so easy to construct a hand. And if you do enough of them, you'll be able to do hands out of your head. But I don't want you to do hands out of your head until you really constructed them, a lot of them. So go ahead, go on Google and uh, and work on that. Go on Google and you know download lots of pictures of hands and construct them all different angles. Okay, today we were just doing the back of the hand, you know, but you know from the front of the hand that would be a whole new lesson. And maybe we'll do next week 
we'll do the front of the hand because that's that's a lot different you know but still you know a lot of things are the same but with a different angle you don't see those uh, these tendons and you see a lot more of the muscles in the palm of the hand so so very cool so I hope you guys enjoyed this I uh, I think it was important uh, not as fun maybe as doing the eyeball or or the nose but I think next time you work on the hand you're definitely going to look at the hand much differently and have a greater understanding and for any art teacher that's what I'm looking to to impart to you guys a greater understanding of the world around you now next week we're gonna do it again I think we're gonna do the we're gonna do the palm of the hand so that would be pretty fun so get your paper and pencil ready for next week Saturday at 9 o'clock and that would be a lot of fun so I'm definitely looking forward to it tone thank you so much Brad and John and Rick and Gloria thank you so much over there in uh, over there in YouTube I appreciate it and everyone here in Facebook thank you so much and I hope you guys have a great weekend